Hey everyone, let's quickly talk about the most important tech event that happened a few days ago at the Tesla We Robot presentation. I'm Franz, and on behalf of everybody at Tesla, welcome to We Robot. Tesla announced a few products that looked different from each other, but in the end, they revolved around the same technology that established itself a couple of years ago as the most important thing that will drastically change the future. And there is no doubt about it. I'm talking about AI. And it's not just about AI. It's about computer vision, which connects artificial intelligence to the real world and allows it to understand how it works deeply. And let's talk about it and why it is so important. Tesla showcased a cybercab, which everyone has been calling a robot taxi. As you can see, I just arrived in the robot taxi, the cybercab. A robot van that nobody had any idea about. Also, what, 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 what happens if you need a vehicle that uh, is bigger than a Model Y? The Robovan. Could you please repeat that? The Robovan is, uh, this is, a, we're, we're going to make this, and it's going to look like that. And some progress on Optimus robots. We've made a lot of progress with the Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started it with someone um, in a robot suit. Uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. Instead of speculating whether these products will be possible or not, and when they'll be possible, which is quite an obvious and boring thing to do, and this video is not exactly about that, let's focus on the obvious shift to AI that Tesla basically announced. Something that seems a very few people noticed, especially considering how significant it is. It's quite interesting because Tesla is one of the very few companies that announced not just a shift to AI development for software, but they claimed through these presentations that they have shifted to the development of software combined with the hardware. Essentially, they are building real-world products that are supposed to change the world around us because they'll be physically connected to it. Unlike smartphones and other similar devices that can't interact with the real world and are basically just elements of one-way user interface. And if you think that I'm talking about the robot taxi, you're wrong. Let's talk about the main announcements first and then we will dive a little bit deeper. Tesla cyber cap or a robot taxi, after the presentation, people were excited about it. Some didn't believe that it will be possible to launch this product by 2027. In probably well, I tend to be a little optimistic with time frames. In 2026, before 2027, let me put it that way. As Elon mentioned, there were some questions like, why wouldn't they put the steering wheel in there? Because it's a logical way to launch the product and then get rid of them when it makes sense. For example, when the car starts driving by itself eventually, right? However, this is not the main point. This two-passenger car looks like a concept car right now, but knowing how Tesla launches their products, I would expect it would be very close to what people saw at the presentation. Maybe it will be launched a bit later, but given they want to launch it first in California and Texas, they might still be able to launch it by 2027. If they do, let's say they do, I will shave my head on camera. And yes, I know that Elon usually goes behind his schedule, but I wouldn't bet shaving my head against a guy who develops self-driving cars, develops AI, lands rockets, augments human brains, digs tunnels under Las Vegas, and other things you call them. I like Marcus reviews because they are logical, but this is a risky move in my opinion. A bold move, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, now Robovan. Could you please repeat that? The Robovan. It is definitely considered as a gimmick by many people, and it is funny, but the main argument that I keep hearing is that it doesn't have enough clearance, which is quite a stupid argument in my opinion, as it might change over time without significantly changing the design of the vehicle. It is obviously a proposed city AI driven vehicle, not enough road when that you can take uh, to the back country to spend some time with your loved ones. So I don't think that it looks stupid or something that is impossible given they progress so much with FSD. Optimus was shown as well and now it walks among people. The Optimus robots will walk among you. The robots at the event were controlled by real people and I think the reason is pretty obvious here. The AI isn't ready to control and operate it fully yet. 
This progress is specifically about the mechanical part of the robot. We will talk about the AI part a bit later in this video, but for now just keep in mind that this is mechanical update and nothing more. It shows the progress has been made, that it's flexible, it can walk and somehow interact with people, and so on. I still think that the most complicated part for humanoid robots is walking and balancing. And the progress shown was fine, but it's not ahead of Boston Dynamics and other competitors for sure. But keep in mind that it's a three-year progress of such a huge company and extrapolated to another three years. Also, I think it makes sense to discuss the purpose of having a humanoid robot around us instead of specifically designed robots that are capable of doing some tasks perfectly well such as vehicle assembling robots or even those that Tesla showed us for the CyberCab and that clean the vehicle from the inside. I personally think that Tesla is actively proposing us the era of consumer robotics. And the reason it has a human shape is because humans are good at everything we do. Think about it this way. We are not ideal, but we can do almost everything in the world created by us. So the robot should be equally good at any tasks that you throw at it and should be capable of doing these tasks. So you should be able to say, oh, hey, change the litter box for my cat and then clean up the basement. And it should understand you and be able to do so. Because if it's not a human-shaped robot, it wouldn't be able to effectively navigate and operate through the human-designed world. Now let's talk about why this presentation is so important. AI. It is just a speculation, but at the moment it looks as logical as it is. So let's do some theory first. If you are not familiar with the AI topic, here's some very basic information. The main thing about the current generation of large language models and even generative AI is that we don't know exactly how they work. This is why the concept of the black box exists. It means that we teach the algorithm with a lot of data and it allocates that data somehow within itself and then manages to use it according to the input it receives. The same is applicable to generative AI. Literally nobody knows how they operate the data within the black box. And this is why people are so concerned about AI safety. Because what if something that you can't control decides that it shouldn't be controlled? and potentially bad things happen. Nobody knows and nobody can predict that. We've had a huge breakthrough in AI in the last few years, and while it is significant, we are still at the very beginning of the AI era. Current AI systems that are increasingly sophisticated are still not in line with human decision making and reasoning, especially when it comes to understanding the real world, physics and how things interact. This is one of the reasons we don't have good consistency in, for example, text-to-video AIs, because they simply don't understand the real world. And while large language models like GPTs sometimes fail to answer simple real-world questions properly. There is a theory I like about how large language models understand the world. I'm not quite sure who mentioned it first, but I think it was Elias Escover in one of his interviews. He said that language and the way words connect to each other define the model of the physical world around us. Basically, the data that humans collected over the centuries in text form describes physical reality. Count Monte Cristo. Oh, that's Cristo, you dumb shit. <laughs> that's why large language models know how to answer and predict the next token so conveniently, because the more data they have, the clearer the image of the world outside of the black box becomes. You could think about it this way. Every large language model has a simulation or imitation of the real world in a compressed form. Well, sort of. And this is how they predict the next token and why they sometimes seem so human. Coming back to Tesla, what Tesla showed in my opinion is a breakthrough similar to what we had early on. And not just because of the robots, it's because of the missing piece of the puzzle, computer vision, which will connect AI to the real world and provide it with another level of understanding of how reality works. Tesla basically presented a system capable of infinite automated data collection. I'm talking about Optimus. And this system will collect different types of data, visual, audio, text, and so on. Multimodal AI systems will be more advanced than any current large language models. The more data it collects, the smarter it becomes, like a snowball rolling down hills, growing larger and larger and larger over time. This is why this event is so important. It's about providing an extra layer 
to artificial intelligence and announcing an automated data collection system that will make AI significantly smarter in the coming years and will connect it to the real world as well. And don't misunderstand this presentation. It's not just about vehicles. This event is specifically about a very advanced AI improvement that is coming relatively soon. And it's basically muscle flex because no any other company in the world will have access to such amount of data. Whether it's good or not, this is just my opinion about this presentation. You can argue that Elon is just prototyping in real time. Well, I tend to be a little optimistic with time frames. But given what he already accomplished, I think he's been always thinking big. And nothing is as big as AGI. I hope you like this video. I know it's a little bit of a different format, so let me know do you like it or not. And as usual, thank you for your time. Everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the uh, the AI and first computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. The same techniques, it's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of done. And then we've progressed dramatically year after year.